So now that we've laid the groundwork for the basic understanding that's going to be needed to understand the bigger picture of the endocrine system as a whole, we can now start dissecting this system in more specific flowcharts and more specific uh, topics. We've broadly looked at some endocrinology, even though it doesn't seem like it since we never mentioned endocrine at all, but now we're going to get really into the specific details associated with that system and the study of such a system. And in order to study endocrinology and the endocrine system as a whole, you absolutely need to understand about hormones. Hormones is a Greek word and Greek root, which comes from the Greek root hormon, which means to put in motion. And you can simply consider hormones as the idea of something that's going to be defined as to excite. Hormones will excite things. Now, before we begin, hormones, we're going to broadly define them as the following. So a basic definition, which we'll do on the side here, is the following. Hormones are chemical signaling molecules. Now, Notice how we haven't said that they're proteins, we haven't said that they're carbohydrates, we haven't said anything in terms of their structure. All we've said is that they are chemical signaling molecules. They have a function of signaling, and that is their number one job. They are responsible, essentially, for regulation. That's what much of the endocrine system is about, regulating. Remember, regulators versus conformers. I told you regulators will probably be seen a little bit more, and that's because Hormones themselves are responsible for, a lot of the times, uh, a great amount of regulation. So that's a key here. In addition, because they are chemical signaling molecules, they are often also considered the messengers of the endocrine system. The chemical messengers of the endocrine system. So they, I would consider hormones themselves the functional unit of the endocrine system. The one thing that every single study of endocrinology relies on is the utilization of hormones as regulatory chemical signaling molecules that send messages throughout the body. Now, how does it send messages throughout the body? That's a big question to ask, and we can figure that out very simply by looking at a very uh, simple, simplified route of delivery. Because, again, this is a message, they are messengers, that need to be signaled or sent somewhere. So they have to be delivered. And the delivery is quite simple, but it's very important to understand the steps involved. So, what's going to happen is the following. Whenever you talk about hormones, hormones most of the time will be secreted. There's a term we'll uh, expand upon a little bit later, but for right now, just understand that hormones are secreted specifically into body fluids. Now, you should already be thinking, oh, well, why body fluids? What's the purpose of the fluids? Well, that's because, remember, if you want to enter anything into a cell or exit anything from a cell, you have to make sure it's in an aqueous environment. Look what we're doing. We're taking a hormone, which is a chemical signaling molecule that sends a message, and we're putting it immediately into a fluid, an aqueous environment, because that's what our body's internal environment dictates. And that's what we do step one, so it's important. Aqueous environment, right there. So, it's secreted into a body fluid. A good example would be like blood. So hormones are secreted into the blood, sometimes on a carrier protein, sometimes they can float into the blood without a carrier protein. We'll get into those details a little bit later. But next, once you use the blood, I think of the blood as a highway, as a transport mechanism, That's because blood is all throughout your body, right? And you need to get this hormone, this little, little molecule, this chemical molecule, and you need to send this message to, let's say, a cell all the way on the other side of the body. You hop on the blood highway, the blood highway takes you to that, and what you end up reaching is a target cell. Now, it's important to use this terminology of target cell because target cell uh, sort of tells you that there has to be a specific cell that's the target. And that's the big idea here about the route of delivery. Hormones are very, very specific to what they need to get to and what they need to reach. Thus, we don't just say reach cell. We say reach target cell. And not only that, once you reach the target cell, you have to make sure you correctly bind to target cell, TC for target cell, since we're going to be saying that a lot. So you reach target cell, you bind it to target cell. This is a very specific binding that happens. And we're going to ask ourselves, how do you bind to a target cell? How could you possibly do this? 
Well, the target sale, it specifically has, um, and specific is the key word one more time, it has specific receptors. You have to have to understand that hormones rely on specific receptor recognition that has to happen. In order for this chemical signal to be understood, it has to fall into a specific receptor on the target cell for that specific hormone. If you cannot tell already, specificity is huge in the endocrine system. And that's what governs the way that the hormones work. Hormones cannot just um, just go about and do their thing on any, any old cell. There has to be a specific cell with a specific receptor that the specific hormone can fall into and only these cells will be activated. Only these cells will get the message and only these cells will respond to that message. So that's our basic route of delivery of a hormone. Now, I think it's worth noting that these receptors are very important and thus we have to talk about them just a little bit more on the side here. So if it hasn't been already clear, hormones, they are secreted into the blood and they need to get to a receptor and they need to bind to that receptor. Now, speaking of those receptors, what are they essentially? Of course, we have to talk about their structure since we're talking about physiology and anatomy. Their structure of a receptor is something we've seen before. They're usually going to be uh, consisting of a protein structure on the outside of a cell. On the outside of a cell, also sometimes glycoproteins can serve as receptors on the outside of a cell. Please do not forget, receptors are usually on the outside of the cell. And then we're going to write this down as on target cell surface. Why is that? Well, the target cell surface has to say, okay, I see that there's a hormone here. Uh, let's see, is it the right hormone that should be entering the cell? Because remember, semi-permeable membrane allows certain things in and allows certain things out. Okay, let's see if you pass the test of structure and re receptor and hormone specificity. Do you match the receptor that you are supposed to be matching to? Do you match the protein or glycoprotein? Yes, then you may enter. That's our idea of receptor specificity. So now that basically can be summarized by the idea of recognize, which I basically just said in words, and bind. So hormones recognize and bind, uh, the receptors, I mean, recognize and bind to specific hormones and vice versa. Once you have this specific binding, look at how many times we say specific in this flowchart, specific binding to these hormones, you get a, I'm going to say it one more time, a very, very, trust me, very specific reaction, a very specific interaction. And this is essentially going to be very important when you look at any sort of hormone. So hormones rely on specificity. Please do not forget that. Moving forward, receptors themselves, um, because they are so common and so well needed in terms of the endocrine system, they're actually continuously synthesized, but they are also continuously degraded as well. This is kind of weird that they're both made a lot synthesized and they're also destroyed a lot by themselves. They're, synth they're degraded uh, a lot as well. So what we say is that receptors are synthesized when dot 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 just to build some suspense when hormone levels are low. This is going to sound a little weird for right now. Just give me a second. Hormone levels are low and also they have to be uh, low for a long time. So low long time. So if the hormone level is low, and it's low for a long time, what you're going to have is a specific response. And that res specific response will be to make more receptors. And when you make more receptors, you also are going to have a sub-response, let's say, that will be like, if we're making more receptors, we're also going to degrade less receptors. So we're going to, we're going to make sure we keep the receptors that are there and we make more receptors. Now, the basic question that people ask a lot of times is why would you want to make them if the hormone levels are low? What's going to happen is if the hormone levels are low, the body is going to recognize this. The set point essentially is going to be lower than usual. And the body will respond by saying, hey, I feel that the hormone levels of hormone A are low. I feel like I should make a lot more hormones. And the body will do that. It will make a lot more hormones. When it makes a lot more hormones, that those hormones are useless unless you have receptors ready to uh, uh, to connect, to recognize and bind to those hormones that the body's about to make in great detail because it sensed that they were low. So what's going to happen is as a sort of preparation, these receptors will be made in great, great quantities and they will be degraded in great uh, in much less quantities 
in, in essence, what we're doing here is we're preparing for the body's response. Body will sense hormones are low, and they will say, and it will say, you know what? Let's make more hormones. Those hormones are useless unless there's a specific receptor there, and those receptors will be made in great quantities when this situation arises. And the same can be said. Well, not the same, but the exact opposite can be said when we have the degraded situation. Hormone receptors are degraded when. So if you just take the opposite here, that's all you have to do. When the hormone levels are high, so the body says, hey, there's so much of this hormone, right? Hormone levels are high, and also they're going to be have to be high for a long time. So that's the key idea. They have to be, first of all, uh, hormone, uh, hormone levels low, of course, I messed that up. Hormone levels high and high for a long time. This would essentially mean that you have to make less receptors. Makes less receptors because now you're basically uh, responding to the body by saying, hey, you have way too many of these hormones. We're not going to be making the receptors necessary for them to be uh, brought into the cells. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to also degrade more, degrade more receptors. And because we're degrading more receptors, these hormones are never going to enter cells. Thus, as a response to the high levels of hormones, the hormone levels will naturally just get lower because they have no receptors to recognize and bind to. That's a classic, classic negative feedback response that we see here. And that covers our first look at hormones. And now we're going to be looking at the specific functions of these hormones and how they work as we move forward.